happy to start, I'm going to connect to my Cisco ASDM and log into the graphical user interface because I need to set up a AAA server group and then add into that server group my AAA server. So once I'm in, I need to go to configuration, remote access VPN, AAA local users, AAA server groups. And in the server group section at the top, click add. And give the server group a sensible name. Make sure the protocol is set to radius. And I'm going to leave everything else on its defaults and click OK. Now with that server group selected in the bottom section, I'm going to click add to add in a server into that group. Tap in its IP address and under server secret key add in a shared secret that you're also going to enter on your radius server. I'm just going to use 123456. I suggest you use something a little bit more complex. Hit apply. I've got uh, command preview on which is why you see that window. You may not. And that's a setup on the ASA. So if I minimize that down and jump onto our Windows Server to set up a radius, select Server Manager, Roles, and with Roles selected over on the right hand side, I'm going to select Add Role. Now you may see a welcome screen here and you can tick a box to skip it, but this one goes straight on to adding the role in. We want Network Policy and Access Services. Click Next, Next, and select Network Policy Server. Next, Install. Now this takes quite some time for the purpose of the video, I've sped it up. And hopefully, when it is completed, you should see that it says Installation Succeeded, and click Close. Now if you expand Network Policy and Access Services, MPS local. We need to authorize this server in Active Directory. That's over on the right hand side. So select Register Server in Active Directory. Click OK. OK. OK, now that it's registered, we need to set up the firewall as a radius client. So I'll just pull that across so we can see what we're doing. If you expand radius clients and servers, then right click radius clients, you can add in a new one. Set up a friendly name for the Cisco ASA. I'm going to use Cisco ASA. Remember this because you're going to need it again in a minute. And type in the IP address of the ASA. Then down at the bottom, the shared secret that you set up originally on the ASTM, you need to type in here and confirm. And click OK. So that's my radius client set up. Before we can we can use it we need to set up a couple of policies. So over on the left hand side you'll see just below it says policies. If we expand that out the first one to set up is a connection request policy. If you right click that and select new and okay, call the policy whatever you want. Give it a sensible name. I'm just going to use remote-vpn and click next. Now I need to add in a condition for the policy. So if you click add and scroll down to near the bottom, you'll see one of the options on there is client friendly name. Select that, click add, then type in the friendly name that we set up for the Cisco ASA earlier. You'll remember ours was Cisco ASA. Okay. Next. 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 Now, change the attribute from call station ID to username. I click next. And click finish. So that's our connection request policy set up. Now we need to set up a network policy. So we're in the folder below, right click network policies and select new. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to give ours the same name as our connection request policy and just call it remote-vpn. Next. Now I'm going to add in a condition on this policy, but this time I'm going to select user groups. 
and click Add. And then I'll browse for the user group that I want to add in. Now I'm going to add in the domain users group. You might want to set up a security group, particularly for your VPN users. But for the sake of the video and for ease, I'm just going to use domain users. So all my domain users will be allowed to authenticate against Radius. Click OK. Next, by default, access granted will be selected, which is what you want. Next. Now you need to add in unencrypted authentication, PAP and SPAP. Click Next. Heed the warning, you don't want to read the help topic, so click No. Next. Next. And finish. So server side, that's us pretty much set up. What we need to do now is test that it works and our Cisco ASTM thankfully will do that for us. If you jump back into the ASTM on the same page you were on before, with the server selected you can see there's the option to test. Select authentication and I'm going to use my domain username and my domain password which is a member of the domain users group. And click OK and all being well if we've done everything right it should say that it is successful. Finally, don't forget to save all your hard work on the Cisco Asset by going up to File and Save Running Configuration to Flash. Again, I've got Command Preview on, you might not see that. And that's a setup. And now the server can authenticate things like your remote VPN clients. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peaknetlife.com.